Man. Hey. Du bisa time then um uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. So a quick overview of what I'm talking about. Um basically over the last that are specifically built for testing or attacking networks. Um, I did a, a talk a couple years ago called uh, uh, Pendest Apocalypse. And in that talk, I basically detail and get access to compromise the organization. So I thought, or I started to go back this year. Um, and it really led me down a path that pretty much everything I do now is PowerShell driven uh, for the most part. Um, so tools and thought, you know, put together well real quick who in Black Hills Information Security who host a couple camp and um, check out our city site meetups. Um, if anyone has seen any of the history of me, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so let's jump right into remote attacks. So meaning, meaning like we're attacking a network remotely, trying to get in um, externally. So the first thing, um, I wrote a tool called Power Meta recently that uh, basically allows us to discover metadata in publicly available files on servers that are hosted. They should go to actually stripping out of files. So um, you know, like for example, you know, you might have like an accounting team or HR or marketing that are building like PDFs or documents that uh, local system. Within those files, they post some for, let's say, like a marketing purpose. Like they've got a, a white paper out there. A lot of times, they're not stripping the actual metadata out of that. The inside of the person who is the author of that, of that file. Um, so for us as an external attacker, gaining the insight name. Domain names, computer names. Um, it gives us additional information to go through further attacks later on. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about able to craft a of potential usernames of an internal organization um, can can help tremendously with getting in. Um, so, about mail twice in this presentation. This one is specifically for the external purposes of a pen test. Um, so with Mail Sniper, I, I basically wanted to, to um, have a tool that could attack OA and uh, exchange portals on the internet. Um, so what I mean by that is, uh, so OA has a couple of login. Um, you have like this, you know, you go to the web, HTTPS, whatever, whatever domain. Um, but then there's also exchange services, which is a separate protocol next to OA um, that also allows for the reading of emails and, and other in information. Um, so Mail Sniper, we have a couple different models for spring attacks, uh, where you take the list of usernames from an organization and you try one password against each of them so you don't lock anybody out. Because pretty much every Microsoft Active Directory environment has some sort of lockout policy. So if you stay under that lockout policy, potentially okay. um, you're going to get hits. So, uh, once you gain access to one credential, um, to kind of give you like the, the full circle uh, from the last tool, so let's say we, we found out a username schema, generated a list of, I don't know, like 100 possible usernames based off of ones we've gathered from LinkedIn or just brute, brute force together. John, Michael, whatever, and, and just kind of brute force a list of usernames together, and then tried one password against each of them. If we get one correct password combination, we can then go grab the global address list from OA, which is email address from that organization. And then we do more password spraying attacks against that list. Um, and you know you can see like you just get more and more access. Um, and then the other thing that's fun about Exchange Web Services is most two-factor authentication softwares don't actually protect that layer. So 
it passed two factor. Like once you get creds, like you could potentially for VPN info. Um, we actually had a case recently where we performed a path factor authentication token reset, and the email for the, the two factor off software went to the email address of the person, and we were able to read it bypassing the two-factor authentication software through EWS to actually uh, get the token that we needed to put, put the two-factor authentication VPN. Real quick, uh, we did a webcast a couple months ago. It was basically an hour long. One um, in, in, in our eyes. Uh, then, you know, finding an OS server on, on the target domain, which is typically pretty easy. You know, most of the time it's, you know, webmail or mail or, or whatever. Okay, so, so and, and user generation too. Um, and what I mean by that is we can kind of figure out what an internal domain schema is uh, based off of response times from login requests. Uh, so, like, let's say we do, like, uh, potential, you know, one seconds. Um, so like, say, hey, that, that one took a lot longer to respond. It's probably the internal domain name for the organization. Um, same thing with usernames. So, uh, you know, after we get some usernames, like I, I mentioned briefly a bit ago, um, we can do password spraying. We can get the global address list, do more password spraying. And then, like I said, two pass, and then there's a number of compromise from that point, right? Search for VPN access um, in their email, like, you know, how, like, how did they get in? Like, they probably had some instructions, or maybe there's a SharePoint site externally as well where they have that documented. Um, and then employee to employee fish, so like, you know, like, relationship between a user on a domain, access to their email, you can now between trust relationships conversation um, where somebody's already, you know, established some sort of trust with each other. The last thing that's actually really awesome is uh, uh, Outlook, um, Outlook rules. So what that is is basically um, really sync across Outlook instance through um, Outlook on like my local system. Log in as a user of a domain create a rule that says, hey, whenever I receive this email with this subject, run this piece of software, run an application. So the second that's, I can now send that and their outlook on their internal domain will run that, that malicious outlook rule, which will go grab my, my malicious application desktop to like, you send them any pops a shell in their system. All right, so um, it's partially gaining a foothold there, but uh, to, to kind of draw well, and Partial Empire is great, uh, pretty related. It's uh, what sense that you or um, and uh, like for for example, malicious HTTP host that on a web server, fish somebody into opening the HTA, have it run. Um, well, from these payloads, uh, ways to inject on like a Word doc, would send to the organization. They would then. Command and control. Uh, so with PowerShell Empire and with uh, uh, with Unicorn, um, you know, m I think probably most of the time people are using the mature payloads, right? So using like your reverse HTTPS, um, which would potentially just connect out over HTTPS um, or reverse TCP over support. A number of other PowerShell-based command and control channels that have been written and are pretty awesome passing a lot. Most 
which uh, basically is the PowerShell version of Netcat. Um, so, you know, if you know Netcat, it's, you know, quote, <laughs> um, so, I mean, you can create like a, any piece of power. And then ICMP. Um, so, like, if you allow ping out of your environment, you can get a shell over ICMP, uh, echo requests and replies. It's really. You can, like, just get ICMP out of your. Um, so, just uh, if you haven't heard of DNS cat, DNS. Um, CAD is a, a C2 uh, tool that will allow you to establish a shell. In, um, and the cool thing about that is request will forcibly uh, DNS servers. So within an organization, the first thing it's going to hit is your internal domain controller um, and uh, or your internal DNS. You go out to the internet there. Okay, situational awareness. So once we get a shell, um, you know, a lot of times there's there's certain commands that we like to run um, to just kind of our foothold in the environment. Because um, we were getting just running typical stuff like IP config, net, uh, you know, your typical your typical commands that you might run, and you know, a lot of typical or um, so they're flagging that. So with this tool, that's a PowerShell-based tool that does not use any of those commands, accomplishes a lot of the usernames, um, and then also checks for poten potential security products. On so like it looks common processes that we've seen. Um, I, I still need more people to like submit more processes to me because it's not. Um, but as or more um, process names I'm incorporating those in. It performs uh, egress port filtering, so meaning it does on port scan to the internet and says um, server on the internet that has all, all ports open, if, if any of those ports are open, then I know that potentially they're allowed outside the firewall. So, um, you know, I've got a server on the internet that has all 65,535 ports open, and if, if I scan that server from inside a domain, then any ports that come back to me saying open, I know are allowed outbound. And so, you know, could <clears throat> All right, privilege escalation. Um, so there's different uh, for, for gaining elevated access in a domain. A lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll get a shell on a system and it's, you know, just a, a basic user that's not in so we can have tasks. Um, so one PowerShell tool that is really amazing is PowerUp. Um, PowerUp for a lot of different checks, checks for like uh, uh, un unattended install files that potentially have passwords in them. Conditions that you might be able to like inject your own binary to have it run that instead of the, the elevated in the, uh, you know, a number of different things to, to access on is uh, PowerUp SQL. So this is more of like uh, uh, elevating privileges across other systems on the domain. Um, so with PowerUp, discover SQL servers on the domain. Um, and then you can check your there's access to it uh, from your, your, your compromised host. Um, so you can check to see if that, that user has any sort of access first off to that system. Um, and then if it does, if it can like access the, like whatever databases are in that SQL, Uh, attacks to try to get USA on that remote SQL server. Um, and the other thing that's really cool is finding sensitive data at scale. So there's, um, you know, there's there's a couple different Metasploit modules. Like specifically, one is like the um, MSSQL Enum, which you can you can run to like get some interesting stuff from a specific server. This one, find me all the sensitive across all the databases, um, and it'll come back and say, hey, there's potential credit card. In this one, there's passwords in. The it's really neat. Okay, so uh, domain exploitation. This is um, this is where we have a lot of fun. Roast. Um, so the attack is something in um, weird. This is is um, where you have uh, whenever you create a. 
uh, an SPN. Tickets for those accounts as any domain user. Um, and the cool thing about that is you get the password hashes for those accounts. So you can then tickets and then start cracking them without really doing a whole lot on the domain. I mean, you can just essentially have a, a standard domain user and just start cracking passwords for usually elevated um, it, we the, on the system for a day got uh, those tickets one of those was a domain admin of the of the network which is great you know like brutal <laughs> get gpp password is another really something you want to main right now password out and what a lot of the the that Microsoft was available run this and it'll go find all the DCs find any potential GPP files and sysvol and decrypt those passwords for you um, and a lot of times you know you'll find like that it was a local admin Removing those, likely still there. Amazing. I I I, I think this is probably one of my favorite PowerShell. So a ton of a domain and help admin as possible. Um, I, I mean, it's got plenty of other functionality too for finding just paths to other systems and um, other other domains and a trust relationship. Um, goes out to every system and says, hey, who's local admins of your system? Who's currently got a session to your system? So like, what are the, the group relationships in the domain? And then it kind of correlates all that. So like, it br you bring all that data into this, this, this database and it kind of graphs out um, the process of you getting, you know, hey, you know, this user, uh, he's part of domain admins, he's logged into this system right here. Um, and you're, you're on this system way over here. Here's the You know, once you get there, you can run Mimikatz or something to track his. What that look. Um, so starting in the bottom, he's he's a member of the specific. Member is. And one of those hosts, has an admin. Um, you know, basically. Is to the system. If the man has a session, you give it to one system. Right. So, like, similar to, to Bloodhound in, in the sense that you're trying to find local admin access, sometimes I just run. Uh, where you're a local admin. And a lot of times you'll find that uh, something like domain. Add the the local admin that system. I think that system. Uh, passwords is it another uh, password or PowerShell tool that I wrote for password spraying. This one, oh, did I go past it? Oh, no, there it is. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, um, the same concept that I was talking about with the. OAuth, um, so with domain password spray, it goes and grabs a list of usernames from the domain, and you give it a password or a password list, and it's, it's just doing like one password at a time. So that got a user. So if you try spray everybody, thirty thousand user users in the domain, you're going to get a lot of hits for spring 2017. Um, and so like going back to like the on things. You get like right? most of them, you one person that has admin access to one system that a domain admin's logged into. You just go to Bloodhound, go to go to your Bloodhound, search. Uh, you can do like you know user X to domain admin um, or user B to domain admin, and then it'll you know find you a path. You have 
potentially having a path there is what I'm trying to get at. Um, this is kind of what it typically looks like on most domains that we, we test. Um, so each one of the green lines you see is a success, successful password spray, um, successful password attempt for a specific I mean, like you can, you would go through the list now and say, hey, uh, Bloodhound data, which one of these users has you know, access to a, a system that a domain admin has access to? All right, let's talk about just exp um, You know, some of these take actually run, um, but they they're very very pen testing first. It's basically partial version of Respect. If you, if you um, it's a very easy tool. Uh, query the local fan for, for, for DNS name. That, that's not here on our network. Everyone on the local LAN, every system, and say, yes, I'm and when you do that, you actually get go oh, and take those off, tracking those. Another fun from PowerView is this one will basically query the domain. port scan or a lot of you can just run this and the domain hey here's an XP box right here I'll try point to try to uh, on it um, power web shot is a tool that I'm working on that has not been released yet um, so basically I wanted PowerShell version here's eyewitness what this is going to be. Um, it'll be. I'm going to be posting it up this week. It's it's still in very much a dev form. Um, still needs some work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and like out there and if you think with it. But basically, I is a tool that you give it a list of uh, server names and um, it will go and do screenshots for you. It's essentially a screenshotting tool. So you know, a lot of pen tests will find like a ton of web servers. Um, specifically on internal domains, um, and if if we can like go through those quickly, here's a G server that looks like you know something I could probably go try a default cred to pretty quickly. You know, like let's say like I wanted to look at a thousand web servers really quickly. Run this tool; it'll go and screenshot all the HTML can go and things you might want to be interested in. Anyways, that that's going to be something this week. Uh, all right. Post exploitation. So, this is Mimikatz uh, dumping clear text credits from memory. There's a PowerShell version of it called Invoke Mimikatz, uh, which is very useful. Um, you know, version is it's not a binary on maybe, but we'll talk about um, and it's not hard. Um, but yeah, so you know, invoke Mimikatz is nice to have. Um, one one that one of the big tricks that I like is using um, a PowerShell version of proc dump to dump uh, like memory from um, like RD memory dump, literally running Mimikatz on that system. You just do a proc dump with power. You have the proc dump now. Mimikatz. All right, uh, talk about finding sensitive data a little bit. Um, so, you know, post is, you, know, you, you get, you know, the most administrative access level you would consider. Showing them the data is on the network, you've got access to it, it's very important too. Um, so I, I really love the combo of uh, invoke ShareFinder and invoke FileFinder. Both of these are part of PowerView. So ShareFinder, I'm gonna say, hey, what shares do you have? 
of all the shares on the network. Um, and then you run File Finder against that list of found shares. And File Finder will then basically tell you, hey, on the network that have, um, here's all the, or whatever you want to give it. Um, so here's, here's all the different systems that, or the different uh, files you might potentially want to look at. And a lot of times this will generate a fairly large list. Like, let's say you want to find like systems will find on a domain. Um, all right, so this is part two of Mail Sniper. Like we talked about Mail Sniper internally, uh, Mail Sniper internally now um, to find sensitive data in email. Uh, so a lot of organizations use email as their daily um, method of, of just talking to each other. So for example, like, you know, somebody might be just emailing about how do I connect to this system? And oh, use, you know, use these creds here. And, um, or, or, you know, like business just cases are not too sensitive about, about like things that shouldn't be sent over email. Um, so a lot of times you'll find that sensitive data is just being sent in, you know, a very, very accessible as an admin of the network. Mail Sniper, you, there's a couple different options you can use to find sensitive data internally. First off, um, you can, as an admin, uh, as an exchange administrator, um, if, you, if you gain access to exchange admin creds, you can use it to search everybody's email on the domain for certain terms. So similar to the way ShareFinder and FileFinder works, um, you can use it to essentially go to everybody. Or um, even better, you can look for regexes for credit card number strings um, that uh, you know you, you might find that somebody's literally like emailing like a list of credit card numbers inside their domain um, um, or, or passwords or whatever. Um, so that's that's the other part of Mail Sniper. The other uh, the piece of that is just looking at your own email, um, which can be interesting from a privilege escalation perspective. Um, so like let's say we had a user who is not necessarily an admin, um, but they have they have an email account. A lot of times we can search our own email of that user for more passwords. And, you know, if they were talking about passwords in an email somewhere, that might lead us to another system, potentially. All right, so uh, let's talk about obfuscating um, a little bit. So, you know, a lot, of, a lot of this has been just, you know, here's some tools for how to hack a network. Um, and a lot of the defensive sides are, you know, typically like, oh, well, you know, I'd commands fairly easily. Um, let me, let me, you know, just write some rules for that. So there's a tool called Invoke Obfuscation that uh, makes it very easy to obfuscate uh, PowerShell scripts to the level that it's almost, I mean, it's, it's in, works really well. Obfuscating it. So yeah, I mean, it works. Um, and it's pretty easy to use too. Very, very interesting. It, it, I mean, the any any file you obviously works. Like I tested it, and it still still works perfectly. Um, start like various. Uh, around um, options for how you go about obfuscating uh, the different pieces. Um, and then oh, PowerShell without PowerShell. So a lot of people are like, okay, well, I'm just going to remove the disk. Um, PowerShell.exe, no PowerShell ice. Um, then what are you going to do? So uh, one of my coworkers, Brian Furman, came, I, I mean, he's, he's written an article on this. It's really, really awesome to, to run PowerShell because C run. So, I mean, you could literally run C sharp or you could you could write C sharp code that does the exact same thing, does, or you can just use uh, CSC.exe. That PS one file, PowerShell script you already you can write with. Oh, like it's a it's a in Windows binary, um, you could compile it on the disk itself, or you could compile it externally. Um, other argument, so I use, or I, uh, you can, uh, 
PowerShell script onto the CSS. Then there's there's Power Ops. Uh, so this is this is basically using the exact same concept. Regards to basically wraps all of the all like a, a bunch of very interesting PowerShell scripts. The things that we use all uh, GPP to a C sharp binary, um, and basically uh, you would you would drop this onto the disk, which you know dropping an XE is not in the best interest, but it does get around the restrictions of not having PowerShell available. One downfall to this is use the built-in uh, command line terminal or the console that the PowerOps kind of provides. So uh, Brian um, has also been working on this other tool called PowerLine um, that basically allows you to do the exact same thing but from complete command line access. And the good thing about that is that it allows you to do this through as well. Um, so, like, if you tried to run Power Ops through like Meterpreter or Empire, like the the GUI part of it, like the the console that it pops up, doesn't really work very well. Um, but having command line access, you can now run those Power C Sharp uh, from the command line, which is very nice. Um, he also wrote this tool called Power. Power line tool, so you could potentially like PowerShell tool that you want to just run his power stripper tool to strip out um, everything that's not required and kind of prep it for being uh, compiled into his power line XE. So uh, some possible mitigations, right? Um, so like how do, how do we stop the madness if you know if we can if we can't block or if we start blocking PowerShell like and, and you start doing it this way, what are some other things we could try? Um, so like like I said, you know, dis disabling command.exe, PowerShell.exe, PowerShell ice, those are good things. Um, but really logging and monitoring all of this is, is where it's at. Um, being able to alert on or being like honestly, uh, 5.0 has the most advanced logging capabilities right now. Um, it is still uh, on system by default. Um, it basically has no logging. So if, if, if we require our PowerShell script to use version 2.0, it basically bypasses all the logging functionality that's built into PowerShell. On because both the and the require that DLL to be loaded in order to run um, with the the .NET yes uh, make sure they're so um, you know for example the password spraying attack if if we're generating you know fifty thousand failed logins from one terminal on your network that should probably Space protections, types of things. Tool um, code for being compiled locally. Case, and even if you get on to install util, which is a signed Microsoft binary, um, there's just there's there's a lot of Look. At so, in, there's going to be a lot more, more decent stuff too to come. come and I, I, I believe thoroughly that uh, PowerShell is where it's at right now because, I mean, it's every, you know, it's something that's scriptable to do things for back. Any questions? Yep. So the question, the question was, I mean, honestly, I don't know. Um, I, I have. Is 
is this specifically just for MS SQL or is it? I believe, no, but I, I believe because it's it's querying the domain for those those. those. Yep. On this half. Um, so, but most of it is like off of the Twitter. I mean, but from like the sense. Uh, something. Um, I think the way the way to look at it is is what is actually happening on the alerting side, right? Like so, not necessarily specifically, but what is it doing on the network? Like how how do I identify like password spraying? How do I identify scripts at some? Do we have <laughs> no specifically uh, Outlook for Mac uses Exchange Web Services get email. Um, so Block uh, user. And in regards to exchange. Question? Uh, catch, catch this. Um, I can't say the research we've done into analytics products. Is um, about it at all. Um, so, I mean, user on a domain that just normally logs into their computer, does their data. Um, so. 
there's an all right, yeah, one more. All right. Uh, bypassing computable. So Huh, like, so install is one that I'm aware of. It's a uh, it's a, a Windows binary, but there's a there's a lot of other ones. All right.